Hello and welcome. This is Lockdown TV from Unheard. Um, we hear a lot about T cells these days, uh, T cell immunity. What does that actually mean? How confident should we be that it's a factor in the spread or non-spread of coronavirus? Well, here to discuss that with us um, is Dr. Su Arleman from Stockholm. Hello, Dr. Arleman. Can you hear me? Hi. So um, you are both a senior physician at the Karolinska Hospital in Stockholm, um, but also um, assistant professor at the Karolinska Institute, which is Sweden's um, medical research institute. Yeah, that's right. So I'm uh, working as a doctor uh, to take care of the patients and also because I'm a chief at the outpatient clinic now, taking care of the post-COVID patients and uh, running clinical trials at the Karolinska University Hospital. And also I'm a researcher, so I'm doing more research, COVID research now nowadays at the Karolinska Institute. So um, really keen to get into the details of your new study. Uh, mm -hmm came out last week detailing some things you've discovered around the T cells and what that immunity actually means. But first, give us a, a sense of what the situation is in Sweden at the moment. It gets uh, talked about a lot. Um, what are you seeing in your hospital? Yeah, so as we're well known, I mean, we have had pretty high uh, mortality rate in Sweden, especially compared to our Nordic countries. But uh, if you look at the um, uh, the number of deaths and the number of uh, pa patients being admitted to intensive care. I mean, the curve has been really steep in the beginning from the March up to mid of April. And it also now goes, I mean, successfully really down. So, I mean, it's, uh, and it has been especially in the Stockholm region and has been really local uh, varieties. Uh, but now in Stockholm, which has been hit the most, we really see the downhill and now uh, in Intensive care units are getting empty, the wards are getting empty, now we are closing down all this COVID wards. We are really, really seeing a decrease. And that despite, uh, I think, the people are really loosening up. So everybody is, is crowded on the beach, and uh, I think the social distancing is not really kept very well. Uh, nowadays, the more sunnier it gets in Sweden, because it's not so, uh, have, does not happen so often. But still, I mean, the number of patients getting into hospital are really, really decreasing. That means, I think, it's something I'm happening something else. It's not that we are getting harder lockdown or other measures, but I think we are uh, actually I mean, getting closer to I mean, herd immunity. I cannot see any other reasons because we are not really keeping the social distancing as good as in the beginning of the era. You know, the, the official um, numbers for the antibody surveys are still mm -hmm. relatively low. Even in Stockholm, it's it's under 20%, isn't it, that have shown yeah. mm -hmm. bodies. So is it possible that everyone else is still equally vulnerable? This is a totally new disease. So we don't know which uh, fraction of the population need to have antibodies or T cell immunity to have the herd immunity. When can the elderly come out from the isolation and be uh, more comfortable not getting the contagious disease and deadly disease as soon as they come out? Uh, but uh, I mean, this remotely before it was said it was a 70% or should be 50%, but now I mean, at 10% maximum. Uh, antibodies, we are still seeing that a number of infections are decreasing really in March. Do you feel like the uh, epidemic is over in Stockholm? Uh, uh, no, it's not uh, definitely not over because I mean, we do have elderly still being isolated at home. I think the most the, uh, the most mortality has been those in the elderly homes. In elderly homes, usually, I mean, there are one uh, worker is meeting like 10 elderly persons. And the, the, in recent 10 years, the number of elderly home uh, places has been really going down, which means that it's the most sickest person being the elderly home, more now sicker than before. And the, every fifth person died within a month after admission to elderly homes. So I think the most of persons pressing uh, being now uh, who died because of COVID-19 probably would have died shortly after uh, with, without COVID-19. But that said, 
I think COVID-19 related death is not a good death because um, uh, being short of your breath is never good. It's another pleasant death and you're isolated. So, I mean, we should have really spared the elderly of this kind of death, COVID related death. Do you now think that the Swedish approach was right or wrong? Yeah, I don't know if I can say it was right or wrong because we don't have the whole picture. I think we can say that in about one, two years when we're looking back because uh, um, you have to look at the uh, mortality over the whole uh, uh, the period because those who are having harder lockdown when they do step and then release a little bit, they will get more uh, death rates. And if that oscillating will in the end, have the same death rate. I'm not sure about it, but I don't think that medic Swedish medical agency really foresaw that elderly homes will be so bad in protecting the elderly, but we could have done certainly much more for elderly persons. So explain, what's your explanation of the striking contrast between the number of cases that appears in Sweden to be going up, where there seems to be a surge and a lot of reports look at number of cases compared to the numbers of hospitalizations and deaths that mm -hmm. seem to be coming down. Yeah, I mean now we have, uh, before we have a really, really limited capacity of testing. So it means that before, I mean, even if you had COVID symptoms, it was only a recommendation to, to stay home, isolate yourself when you have two days of uh, symptom free days, then you should uh, uh, come out to go back to work. But and now uh, the number of uh, test setting has really been steeply increasing because of the government peer pressure. So now it's almost that, uh, uh, and it's been released it, it, totally free. Whatever who wants it can go testing. It means that these asymptomatic or mild cases are also being now uh, detected. So I don't think that we have more new cases. I think we are just detecting more cases. Yeah, so let, let's talk about your uh, study that has now been submitted in preprint, not uh -huh. yet reviewed, um, but uh, that's ge generated a lot of interest um, because it focuses on this question of T cells and whether there are other kinds of immunity that are protecting people. Tell mm -hmm. us about your um, study and what you've discovered. Yeah, uh, so just to go back to the uh, just explanation, I mean, the, our immune system is uh, consistent of uh, both antibodies and then T cells. And antibodies go directly to the virus, and the T cells is more they're killing the virus infected cells. What we have seen previously in, in the MERS and SARS uh, uh, epidemics that you can have really, and you see in the animal models that the T cell uh, can have really protective immunity in the animal models, and that you can have really long, long, more than 10 years of immunity uh, with the T cells against these uh, other coronaviruses. Uh, what we have done in our study is that uh, in about 200 persons, so I mean, this is not an epidemiological paper, I just must stress that. So we have to be cautious of over interpreting the results or the uh, how you can interpret it. But we found that uh, if you had mild cases, that you can have really negative antibodies afterwards. And uh, it would be around 70-75% we have found that uh, they do not have any antibodies even after you, you have verified COVID-19 from the beginning. And in those persons where they had negative antibodies, uh, almost all of them had uh, strong T cell activity. This study says that, okay, there are cases that you can have a T cell uh, really strong answer, even though you have not have antibodies, meaning that you have encountered the virus, you build up the immunity. And then we looked also at the uh, blood donors uh, that selected uh, uh, just randomly. Uh, and then they had antibodies of 15%. And we could find immunity cells answer in over 30. So it means that almost uh, double the number had T cells uh, immunity uh, compared to the rate of how many had antibodies. Let's talk about the Stockholm area as a good example. If, mm -hmm. you know, is it 15% that are showing uh, actual antibodies in tests? I, I think I would say 10%. Yeah. yeah. So 10% are showing antibodies. And if you're roughly right that uh, maybe as many as 30% might have some kind of T cell 
immunity, mm -hmm. that would still leave 70% of the population completely vulnerable. Yeah. So in which case, why are the hospitalizations and deaths still coming down, 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 and now they're so low that you say your wards are empty? Even though we are not following as good as before, we are still uh, following social distancing. And those who are not in the elderly home, they're with most, most hit. Those in their own homes are still being isolated. I don't know, and this calculation on how many uh, or what the proportion need to be have herd immunity. I mean, we, we don't really know. And of course, these T cells as they have also is uh, limitation. We have we can also have detect certain levels. It's not that perhaps we perhaps you have some immunity that's below the detection level that we cannot measure. So in reality, perhaps it's more. It's just that we cannot diagnose it. It's more of antibodies. Prob probably they could have more antibodies, perhaps being protected, but it's just that we don't have means to uh, detect it without uh, uh, compromising on the uh, specificity. T cell immunity. Yeah. Is that, a, in your view, can it be a protective, a sterilizing immunity, as they call it? Or is yeah. it a form of resistance? Uh, I don't think that our study can uh, show either one if it's really totally protected. Uh, that means that you will never get the infections again. Or if you get it, it will just be like a small sneeze and then you are done. Uh, but, but I think I'm convinced that if you have this immunity, you will not get a second one and get severely ill. The question is, if you get one again, could you be still a spreader? And that I don't know, but I think it will be more local. Uh, you would have perhaps with some local infection. I do not think that you will be really one of the really, like super spreaders that's uh, going to be uh, spreading around in the society. I think once you had it, you are protected, and you will, if you get it, uh, you will uh, press uh, notice as a common cold, or you will hold it, not notice, just some sore throat or something. That's my belief. But of course, this is just my personal opinion. We have to back it up with science data. Isn't the ultimate proof? in hospitalizations and deaths. Mm -hmm. Because if they continue to go down completely mm -hmm. and people carry on being more and more relaxed about social distancing, something is happening that is preventing more people getting sick. So yeah. you can see the proof of the some form of resistance in mm -hmm. the final outcome. Yeah, yeah. But that's still, of course, as I said before, it's still combination of the some kind of resistance and a combination of there are some people still uh, following your social distancing rules. Mm. So it's a combination. So unless everybody loosen up and just go and hug each other, and then, then you will test your real herd immunity. You let the elderly come out, you let everybody social and mingle and live as before. But I think in this time, you will not go back because I mean, so now I think the per everybody has changed their behavior. And as long as this is around, I, I think even if we would say, it, even if they will force uh, with government regulation, oh, you should go back and hug each other. I don't think that people will do it freely. A pro-hugging law. Yeah, yeah. No, you have to have it is, at, quite, at least uh, one centimeter of distance. <laughs> but it's quite a frightening prospect, isn't it, that we don't know. So if it, we don't know, I mean, it might be that yeah. in Sweden, if tomorrow you implemented that pro-hugging law and you said everyone mm -hmm. out, everybody mingle, mm -hmm. it might be fine. We don't know for certain. So how can, what test can uh, we do? What science yeah. can we do to make sure that's not the case? Because if that is the case, we are wasting a huge amount of our lives on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think it's by releasing slowly because we don't want, we want to be over safe. Uh, so if you're doing, uh, that's why I think everybody's doing stepwise uh, release uh, to see what is uh, going on. So now you can meet the risk groups and to see what happens, what happens if you do that and with you, then you take the social distance one meter or, uh, or, or less and now you can visit the elderly. I, I think it's wise to do it stepwise because otherwise it will be too much uh, experimentation with human lives. Uh, give us a, um, a final sense then of uh, what life is like in Sweden, both uh, in and around the hospital, but also in, in broadly in the streets and in the restaurants. I mean, 
and not the Swedish uh, the strategy has been uh, heavily criticized in other outside Sweden, but I think Swedish people still, uh, the majority are really happy with it, the strategy. And of course, there has been a, I mean, some hard critic within the society also because we have had high mortality and then that cannot be, I mean, this is really serious. I can, this is a failure that we do not protect the elderly. Uh, but um, I mean, people are getting uh, more getting now in the subways and the, riding buses and returning more. But still, I mean, if you meet your acquaintance, you do not have handshake. Uh, you do not uh, hug each other that way if, unless you're a teenager um, and that I don't think they, they care so much about it uh, but uh, still I think the uh, uh, in the middle age groups and elderly I mean still be really cautious still and I think uh, but the most miserable ones are those elderly being still isolated and they have pretty really still a difficult time because they've been isolated. So the famous Swedish uh, summer crayfish parties, are they going yeah. to Are you going to attend a, a crayfish party in August? Uh, yes, we will do, but uh, we're going to be outside. Uh, so, I mean, I have uh, had uh, uh, summer parties with my fellow uh, nurses and doctors and so, but we were outside and uh, I mean, we had uh, had several of those have COVID-19 uh, already, so they were like more of the blockers between or the other ones are unexposed. Uh, so I, I think, I mean, we will meet each other and now when it was uh, before the summer when the um, uh, the students were going out from their uh, once high school um, then uh, I mean they have celebration but they take on work out in the garden and meeting each other and I, and I know that I mean a lot of Swedish people are now seeking more outdoor activities during the summer so I heard that going tenting uh, outside in the woods and uh, those have been sold out almost because everybody wants to be out and not doing indoor activities and certainly we can we, we are or we can but we are not going abroad as much yeah. Have you had COVID-19? Uh, no, I've been tested, but unfortunately, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but it was that I had some symptoms, but they turned out to be negative. And of course, the best thing would be having mild symptoms and have gone through it and have developed antibiotic and T cell immunity. That would be the best uh, scenario, of course. And then you can, I, I could have visited my mother who's elderly, but at this time, so my fellow uh, uh, doctor who has had 19 and antibodies showing like, oh, see this, I'm a, like a VIP person now with antibodies, but what do you have? Uh, Maybe so, you have T cells. Have you tested yourself for T cells? Uh, no, I have not, <laughs> because uh, I don't think as a researcher you should be one of the uh, research objects. But uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I do not think that I have COVID nineteen yet. Okay, Dr. Stuart Alleman, thank you so much for your time. That was really fascinating. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. That was Dr. Sue Arleman of the Karolinska Institute Hospital in Stockholm and research uh, organization um, telling us about what they have discovered on T-cell immunity and the degree to which that might offer protection from coronavirus. Also telling us about what life is really like in Sweden. Thanks for joining.